then we can expect the Newcastle forwards to do everything they can to slow Parramatta up. And uh, as you mentioned a moment ago, David, the power in the Newcastle team is their forward pack. The backs are inexperienced. Uh, there could be a few holes in the fence as the Parramatta speed in the uh, backs gets moving. This is probably the best Parramatta sign we've seen on the field for over 12 months because they were decimated by injuries last year. They've got the ball on the halfway line. And running deep and onto the ball as Linda. He's had a bit of a stint again in England in the off-season. His nose badly broken over there while playing for Castleford. And Peter Ford, just inside Newcastle's territory. Mosley, Sterling, Kenny. All picked up at the end by Michael Erickson. Erickson back inside Newcastle's territory. Kenny was looking for a runner who wasn't there on the outside. And here's Linda again, getting very much involved early on. Last tackle against Parramatta. Good defence from Newcastle early on. And there's the kick from Sterling into the open spaces. And that's Rod Whittaker getting back. And he collected that ball safely. Only about eight metres out from his own line. Frindo in a dummy half. That's Robbie Chu. Taking up the captain, Sam Stewart. He had a blinder in that sevens victory over Manly earlier on in the season. That's the replacement, David Thorne. And the Knights kicking it away from Tony Chalmers and also the fullback Delroy, but Chalmers it is who gets the ball and banged into the ground there. Good subtle piece of play by Newcastle, no sign of early nerves. Great. Had a huge game last week when he came on against Illawarra. Delroy. Good pass there from Taylor. It went to Linda. The ball has gone loose and Stewart's got it for Newcastle. If anything, it's Parramatta who are rushing things at the moment, but they seem determined to move the ball wide. They're not going to take Newcastle on in the middle. Linda's getting himself involved early on for the Parramatta Eels, isn't he? And that's Thorne. Taking it up a few times. Thorne, a former Eel himself. Townsend. A Butterfield. Good tackle. Paul Taylor. Now here's Frendo back in amongst the forwards. He wished he hadn't. Down then. Penalty against Parramatta. Up inside the five. Robbie Chu comes up. And can he be a man who creates history and scored the Newcastle Knights' first ever Winfield Cup Premiership points? was Paul Taylor moving up too quickly just that a little bit too keen to get up and cut off the kick on the last tackle Robbie Chu the former Redcliffe player from Brisbane very capable footballer too but uh, new to the goal kicking role though he did kick uh, those 6 out of 7 last week and, uh, not an experienced goal kicker but this one right in front wind uh, seems to be blowing out a bit up blowing about a bit up here. Uh, Peter Wilkins down the sideline. What's it really blowing like down there? It's blowing pretty uh, strongly up here in the grandstand. David, just about a minute after the kickoff, it uh, picked up a fraction from the southeast, but it seems to be uh, fluctuating. Uh, I think we'll uh, see how it goes, but looking to the south, all I can see is uh, blue skies, so uh, we'll have to wait and see, I think. But uh, it is gusting, so it could be a problem later on. So it's you probably kicking into the breeze, and you can see the Actually, the goalposts are moving about a bit there. That's the wind that's blowing them as Chu comes in. There it is. He struck it pretty well. It's there. The Newcastle Knights open their account with a penalty goal. And the Knights are leading the Eels by two points to nil. We've had only four minutes play. And what a great lift that will be for the Newcastle Knights. Carrying on from last week, 24 to 12 against Manly. Because Newcastle won two out of their three trials. Parramatta won only one out of their five, but uh, really trial form doesn't count for that much. It counts as far as individual performances go, but team combination just isn't tested in trials. But uh, Newcastle will be very happy to start off with two points. There's Steve Ellett restarting play. Butterfield, Frendo with the ball now. Running it back strongly. Good run from Frendo. I suppose the other thing about trials too, Warren, is that of course a lot of the players, you said individuals, are trialling for spots. That's the idea of them. Of course, most of these Parramatta players are seasoned internationals. Well, in a trial, you have to look after yourself a little more than the team. You have to get into the team, and that's the aim. Now, that's uh, Michael McKeon and taking the ball up. Former Smithtown and country player. Has played on the coal fields in the last couple of years. 
Smithtown, the great nursery in years gone by in Group 2 of uh, footballers. Friendo's kick is going to go out on the full. Way, way out on the full. And here's a chance for Parramatta. With the feed to the scrum on the 22, on the attack. Peter Sterling in action for the first time for Parramatta this year. And what a key player he'll be for them right throughout the day. Because he's been out with injury too when Warren is his first game back. The ankle injury, but he seems to be moving quite freely. But I think Peter Sterling on one leg could be the man of the match. Almost uh, made a mess of that. And uh, gee, he's been given a bit for his trouble. This will be a penalty. Steve Walters came in and decided after Boyd at uh, the lock forward had cleaned Sterling up or made sure that he wasn't uh, going to go anywhere with it. But watch little Steve Walters come in and remind him who his opposite number was. There's Sterling, not grabbing it. Now Boyd comes in. Now watch this. There it is. <laughs> he didn't miss. <laughs> bit of Tommy Rodonica since Steve Walters there, letting his opposition halfback know he's on the field. Steve Walters has been playing very well lately for the Knights. A local lad, and uh, it's good to see the local talent in there in a couple of the positions. That's what they'll be looking forward to in the future because the Knights really are uh, uh, an area of rugby league uh, right through their veins, the Newcastle area. But Steve Walters has been in good form, and uh, big things are expected of him. Country player of the year last year. So there's Steve Ella just outside the quarter line, a man who was plagued with shoulder and leg injuries last year, Peter Wilkins. Yes, David, uh, Glenn Frendo's had a couple of kicks already and uh, both pretty nervous attempts, I feel. So there might be uh, one player who's uh, suffering a bit in the early stages of this first big match for Newcastle. Ella to try and level the scores. There's the kick. And he's got it. And so Ella levels it up for the Parramatta Eels. Seven minutes into the game. And it's the Newcastle Knights 2, the Parramatta Eels 2. Great to see Steve Eller out there. Let's hope he and Eric Roth can avoid those injury problems that have plagued him over the last couple of years. Steve Eller only played two matches for uh, Parramatta last year. Tragedy, really, wasn't it? Especially after the injuries that, of course, uh, plagued him uh, back in 1981. And a great take from Gilroy. Never took his eyes off the ball. It really was. Uh, he was in a bit of trouble with the goalpost almost interfering with it. But, uh, good football. Ericsson, a man of immense talent, and look at that, he's still going. Ericsson, good run. Here's Bugden. It was Miller, who, uh, the centre, who finished off Bugden then. Sterling, the cutout pass, well handled by Kenny. And Kenny, he ran into one. I think Thorne might have actually run into an elbow on one of his own teammates there. He certainly got a bit dazed around the head, and it's a penalty against Newcastle, up inside the five again. There's some strong defence going in from the Knights forwards. They're moving up quickly, really hitting hard in the tackles, but they're going to have to recover their positions. Parramatta are a team with Sterling in close who can capitalise, and there is a chance on the right-hand side there, and Parramatta were looking for it, but the penalty went instead. Penalties favouring uh, Parramatta 3-1 at the moment. Uh, Newcastle have to watch that. Now here's Grove. And Boyd missing with one over the top, held up by Thorne down below, Annesley in there quickly, Mosley, Sterling, cuts out one, and Kenny picked that up brilliantly, he's into a bit of space! Kenny looking for someone back on the inside, no one there, Delroy, they keep it going the same way, but Delroy decides to go on his own. Taylor, Sterling, that's Peter Ford, and that's good defence from the Knights. 20 metres out, now that's Wynn. Wynn couldn't get his pass away. Had Sterling in support. Mosley, Taylor, last tackle. Ella, I should say, uh, that's uh, Ericsson with it. It comes away now towards Chalmers. He's trying to force his way over. He's across the corner post, and the referee says no try. Great cover defence. Three players across in the corner. Good work by the Parramatta backs, moving it wide. Now here's Chalmers, who's very strong. Look at this. Just held up on his back and rolled over the corner post. David, the Knights uh, back seem to be moving up, but they don't seem to be moving up with any great purpose for uh, particularly nailing one man. And I think if they give the, the likes of Kenny and Ella the room to move, they'll be exploited out wide all day. Knock on. It's Hanrahan who couldn't get the pass away. Trying a little too hard to get it away. It simply wasn't on. There was no one really in support, and the pass was always going to be in danger. 
Sterling to put the ball in this scrum. Well, the fans doing, but that whistle was very clear. Kenny. Kenny's got Ericsson in support. Ericsson in a bit of open space. He's over the quarter line. Ericsson will score. Ericsson races into the in-goal area and puts it down. And that's the first try to Parramatta and put that down to Bert Brett Kenny. Beautiful running from Kenny. And Ericsson running to the gap. Said, see you later. It's 6-2 to the Eels. That's the third time Kenny has tried to get outside his opposite man, and this time he did it. Slipped it. He pulled two in. That got Ericsson into the gap. Robbie Chu chased. He didn't have the pace to get Ericsson. Who's a flyer? Mick Cronin's got a big rap on Ericsson, and look at him go. Took every advantage of that opportunity created by Brett Kenny. Here it is, Kenny on the outside of Robbie Chu. Gets into the gap, pulls two towards him, slips the pass away perfectly. Chu chases Ericsson, but he didn't have a chance, and the winger went inside to help out, but he wasn't needed. Ericsson was clear by five metres. Well, there it is, Michael Ericsson. Obviously his first try of the year, a man who represented City last year. And he may well do it again last year, uh, this year. Originally from a town just north of Newcastle, from Taree. So there's the Knights. There's Sam Stewart laying down the law. He started off so well, but it was the suspicion all along that the Knights might have been just a little bit thin in defence from the inside backs, and Warren pointed that earlier. Here's Ella, the chance to stretch that margin to six points. Almost back on the quarter line, ten metres in. There it is. It's pretty high. It's very straight too. Two more points. Steve Ella, two from two. And we've had almost ten minutes play and Parramatta are leading the Newcastle Knights by eight points to two. The Newcastle Knights backs are a little inexperienced. A number of them uh, coming out of reserve grade with other teams, determined to prove themselves in first grade. But they're up against a classy back line from Parramatta with Ella there and Kenny. And they are creating the holes on the edge of the ruck and wider. Sterling there on the quarter line. He did a pretty good juggling performance to get that. Mosley. That's Walters and Boyd affecting the tackle. Forward in a dummy half. Kenny again. Kenny beats two. There's the pass. Oh, it's not a good one. Here's a chance for Newcastle as Sam Stewart tries to get it away. He has now making some ground the Knights down the touchline. But Brian Quinton trying to get round his man with no room to move. Pushed into touch. Eric Groth making the tackle and a superb tackle it was too. Couldn't afford to miss it. Newcastle were in. There's Sam Stewart's uh, pass. It would have been six to go as well. Quinton taking the odds to it. He is a speedster. But he also had to uh, combat the strength of Groth that time. And now the referee has penalised the Knights for not packing correctly. Parramatta are continuing to push the ball wide. We've seen a few loose passes in the centres, but they're going to get the ball out there no matter what. They're keeping right away from the Newcastle forwards and they're exploiting holes in the back line of uh, the Knights. Penalties favouring Parramatta 4-1. Well, why wouldn't you, Warren? I mean, obviously, Parramatta's strength is in their backs and Newcastle's weaknesses are also in the backs. At the moment, Newcastle aren't controlling uh, the game. They're not getting holding on to position when they have had it and Parramatta are getting the opportunity. Parramatta with the ball. Midway, half and quarter line. Their own territory. Sterling. The kick to the open spaces. Now, Frendo has a fair run to get back to this. He's finally got it. Whitaker in support. Good tackling though. Taylor underneath and Kenny over the top. Good Fresh choice from Parramatta. Now here's Whitaker. I think that's the first time he's touched it. Pretty close to it. It's Glenn Miller with it. Bad mistake almost by McKeon, and he cleaned it up pretty well, but was pretty lucky as far as the Knights are concerned, and now a bit more good fortune goes their way as Parramatta a little bit too anxious in defence. A couple of the Newcastle forwards having a look. Parramatta letting him off the hook there because they'd held him inside the 22 for five tackles and then giving away the penalty.
Butterfield straight down the centre. That's a better run. Now here's Stewart. Almost on the halfway line. McKinnon again, just inside the Eels territory. Friendo, the kick to the open spaces. That's a good kick. And coming through quickly is Walters. Delroy back and Delroy just got there first as Walters came racing through to chase that. Walters was offside, but the referee signalled the ball was touched from the kick, so putting Walters onside. And Chalmers getting a very hot reception committee there and resenting it a bit. And now Delroy in the action again. Ten metres out from the Eels line. Mosley. They're pretty keen at the moment, the Knights. They realise they've got a bit of pressure on, but Mosley very wisely, realising there was no marker and pinched the good 15 to 20 metres. Smart work by Townsend not to make the tackle when he hadn't marked up correctly. And there's the kick from Sterling. I think that came up a Knight's hand as well. And in the end, Friendo's let it cross the touch line. It has touched a hand, and I think you'll find that Sterling will get the feed. Here's the kick from Sterling, and the cross comes forward, so it was Butterfield getting a hand to it, and so turning over the feed to Parramatta. Friendo there, letting it cross the touchline, may not have known that it came off a Newcastle hand, otherwise he probably would have had a go at it. Feet across in the scrum. Newcastle come up with the ball after all. Glenn Friendo says, hmm, thank you. It's a big difference, doesn't it? Uh, five, six tackles your way instead of six the other way. That's the gain you get from the kick. Not the gain, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the gain you get from the kick, two metres. You're good. The ball bouncing above their, our heads on the grandstand. As far as the tacklers are concerned. Steve Walters and Tony Townsend. The top tacklers as far as Newcastle are concerned early on. And as you'd expect, Paul Taylor is the number one tackler for the Eagles. Earlier today, we saw Parramatta just get away with the under-21s game. But uh, Newcastle were far too strong for Parramatta in reserve grade. They literally thrashed Parramatta. In fact, they led 20 to nil until about a minute from time when Parramatta scored the try. And good football from the Newcastle Knights again. Running trap-wise across Phil Erickson, bundled across that touch line. Too many errors early on here. But it was good work by Glenn Miller that time. He chased Erickson as if his life depended on it. And there it is. What a good tackle. Look at this. Ball and all. And across the touchline. So Newcastle may well come up with this ball. They should. And will. Q. Brett Kenny uh, up there. Now Brett Kenny's uh, almost tackling Steve Wallace. This will be a penalty. It has to be. Well, I mean, he had no option, did he, the ref? I think it was more against uh, Bobby Linder more so than Kenny too, wasn't it? But he, he could have got... Uh, I think he could have got Kenny for any thing. He started a manhandle... Uh, Walters, I think, at the end. Well, it all depends when the referee calls held because uh, you go on with the tackle until he does in that situation. But obviously he did, and they did go on with it far too long. Townsend from dummy half looking for a runner. That's Stewart. That pass was uh, a little bit too late getting to him. He had to stop Stewart. Walters, Chew. And then coming through on the burst. Looked to be Whittaker, but it was. Walters from dummy half. Our boy taking it up. Fourth tackle against the Knights. Townsend from dummy half, straight down the centre. He's still going, he's lost the ball. It'll be a scrum. They're making too many mistakes, simple mistakes. Not under pressure, they're unforced errors, simply dropping it when uh, the players are swarming, the defenders are swarming around them, but they're completely stymieing their attack. Parramatta have realised that Newcastle's main attacking strength is up the middle at the moment, so they've noticed they'll be getting more numbers there. In fact, uh, at the moment, those errors, Newcastle have made eight and Parramatta have made seven, but Newcastle have dropped the ball three times. Parramatta win the scrum, and quickly Kenny goes to the blind side, and he's got away from a couple. Brett Kenny really does look sharp. He's got a point to prove. Some people are suggesting that he could be dropped for this game, which I'm sure was never on, but he's out to prove uh, himself and back into the Australian team in top form this year. Sterling. Nine metres out from the Parramatta quarter line, almost in centre field. The Eels leading 8-2, blindside. Kenny again. The pass comes away to Linda. Linda gets away from Boyd. He's away from another. Looking for support. He's over the halfway line. He's looking across field. The pass comes to Ericsson. But beautiful tackling there from Hanrahan. Picks off his opposite number. 
40 metres out that it's going to be a penalty and it's five in the sin bin. The professional foul from hand to hand, not letting Ericsson get up immediately to play the ball. There's that great run from Linda. Tremendous run from Linda, power and pace, but he pushed off a couple of feeble attempts at the beginning to get away down the blind side, running onto the pass from Kenny. And here's Hanrahan all over the player to give away the penalty and five minutes in the sin bin. So 13 against 12 and Parramatta only 20 metres out from the Newcastle line. Sterling now coming down the centre is Bugden. Mosley, Sterling, forward. Still some sort of affection. Here he goes again. He pulls in the opposition player, puts his support into the gap. Almost a try again. Back to the professional foul, which the referees are cracking down on, and it's great to see them do it because Lindo, after making the break, uh, Parramatta were right on the attack. And he didn't really blame uh, Hanrahan for doing it. I'm certain if you'd been in the same situation, you would have done exactly the same. Well, it's always been the unwritten rule to do that as a player, but with the referees cracking down on it, stops it, and that's what the fans want to see. They want to see a good movement continued on from the next tackle. Friend there, about eight metres out from his own line. Thorn. Butterfield slipped over. They haven't gained much on this uh, set of six tackles, Newcastle. McKinnon goes straight down the centre. Last tackle against the Knights. Trendo, there's the kick. And under pressure, that's a good kick. That's gone a long way downfield. Delroy going back to his quarter line to collect the ball. Trying to link up with Chalmers. Walters chases him. Oh, he's got too much pace, Delroy, and almost back to the halfway. The problem was Walters was all by himself. A couple of players coming through chasing weren't up with him, whereas Parramatta, when they chase, have got a wall of six coming down on the fullback. Chalmers with the ball just inside Newcastle's territory. Kenny. Now there's Ella. Right on the halfway. Two underneath. Over the top. Is Brian Quinton. Peter Ford to play the ball. Michael Mosley, blind side they go now. And there's Grove and he slipped the pass to Ericsson. Ericsson, good football from Parramatta. That was lovely combination. Created something out of nothing. There was no room at all in that spot there. Sterling, Sterling's looking for the kick. There it is, into the open spaces. Getting back there is Whittaker. Now is he, what's he going to do? He's going to try and beat Chalmers. Now Kenny, he's beaten one, but he can't beat Chalmers if he comes again. Good football. He managed to get round him. But notice how quickly Sterling was up there to support his winger. Again, the chases for Parramatta doing the work. Sterling's kick bouncing around, perfectly positioned, holding up. Nothing else uh, the Newcastle uh, winger there, Whittaker, could do. But the chases through to hound him and pin him down in the end goal. And have a look at that at the end. There's four Parramatta players and one Newcastle player in the shot. Now, here's Ella. Beautiful tackle from Chew. Mosley from Dummy Heart. Chew again, the defender, with McKeon and helping. There's the score. Parramatta leading by eight points to two. Ella on the blind side. The zip zip man. Pulled himself up, especially around the shoulders. There's Chalmers who eventually got the ball. Only about 16 metres out. Sterling. Sterling. He's almost lost that, but he's slanting to slip the pass. Now that's Win, And Wynn slips over. 15 minutes remaining in the first half. As big Jeff Buckland goes straight and hard. He's still going. Good run. He's got within five metres. Last tackle against the Eels. Sterling, the grubber kicks on. And getting back there is Boyd. But Fringo, I think, stopped there before the ball. Was quickly coming through. Oh, it was a bit of a tussle in the background. Delroy, and now Kenny's involved with Boyd. A bit of fireworks. A little bit of frustration there. We've got to give it to Newcastle after 20-odd minutes. It's 8-2. They're under a lot of pressure, but they're holding out and they're keeping on coming. Here it is again. Sterling's kick. Now into the end goal area. Now Boyd almost slips over. Now Delroy and also coming through quickly there was Kenny. And uh, Frendo was the first man there. Here comes Hanrahan back onto the field after his five minute rest in the sin bin. And a penalty in the end going to Parramatta after that little fracas in the end goal area. Could really see exactly what uh, stimulated the disagreement. Not 
obviously the touch judge saw something we didn't. A reminder there for Newcastle, you don't give away penalties near your posts. Sterling did appear to be tripped as he chased through after the little kick, but uh, I'm not sure that that was what led to the, the blow-up. So here's Ella, a chance to make it three out of three, and he's got it. And so Parramatta are leading Newcastle by ten points to two. About 13 minutes remaining in the first half. I wouldn't be surprised if the worst thing Newcastle could have done was to thrash Manly last week, because Parramatta, forewarned, forearmed. Of course, Peter Sterling was up here to watch that victory last week and no doubt pinpointed the weaknesses. Delroy. Keenan got him, so too was Chu. Ford. Buckman going straight down the centre. Ten metres out from the quarter line. Paramatters into the field. Mosley going on his own from dummy half. Thorn underneath and over the top was Boyd. Got within 10 metres of the halfway. <laughs> Sterling. There's the kick for that eastern touch line. In fact, it bounces back in and Prendo has it. Up there is Ford now. Can Prendo outrun them? He's running straight across field and Taylor came across and so too did Kenny and they wrapped him up. Now here's a good run. And look at this. Here's a chance for the Knights. Oh, he's run away from the support. He had three men with him on the inside. And Quinton just turned a blind eye to them and went on his own and lost the ball as well. We made the mistake at the end, but showed plenty of pace to burst away. And here's Quinton. He is very fast. He was the fastest man at St George last year. But he had three men with him on the inside and didn't look. Parramatta taking it up. Win. Uh, the errors, both sides making plenty of them during this first half. Newcastle making more and at vital areas because they've given away penalties which have been within kicking distance. Now Parramatta have made the mistake and Newcastle have come up with the ball. There's another error against Parramatta and uh, this error count seems surprising in a way it seems as if Newcastle have made more errors. They've certainly made some more vital ones generally that have... Uh, and I, I, they haven't been able to get their attack moving at all and here we see them again pinned down in close the forwards just aren't really coming forward there doesn't seem to be that much organisation certainly no uh, real skills being shown Knights trying to work it back towards their own quarter line now that's Glenn Miller trying to get on the outside of Ericsson not easy because Ericsson it's all one up stuff at the moment from the Knights now Chu kicking for touch, the ball bouncing towards Chalmers, he did pretty well to take that, back across the halfway line, and he's managed to get it 10 metres inside Newcastle's territory. 10 minutes to go till half-time, Wynn goes the blind side, Wynn trying to set up uh, Ericsson, he's got that pass away, now Ericsson down to the quarter line, he's looking for support, mostly there about half a, half a metre too late. He's in a dummy half now, Taylor, Sterling, and that's Peter Ford. And Ford. Really dumped into the turf there. Sterling again. Kenny, beautiful pass to Ella. Ella tried to get back on the inside and set up growth on the outside, but good defence from Newcastle. Ella charging for the gap, and Kenny put the pass there for him. Now Sterling, the little grubber kick again, but that's picked off by Boyd. And Boyd will get up and play it. Friendo. He's got that pass away. It wasn't a good pass to get away, but Townsend's managed to pinch a few more metres. But that's where they're making the errors. And there's a bad one from Butterfield. It's got going without it was Linda, but he's managed to fall on the loose ball. And they've got the ball again, Parramatta. Erickson. Good tackle from McKinnon. Mosley. Taylor, a dummy half. Forward, yeah, the, the dummy. Good walk. Bobby Linden was hoping he would have got that. He was running towards the gap. Win. Sterling. Kenny. Sterling's got it back. The pass to Ella. Ella's got it away to Grace. Grace versus Frendo. Frendo and Grace. Grace got it in the end goal area. And I'll tell you to try. The referee says yes. 
magic hands from Steve Eller.